Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. I'm Patrick, flying solo. So the Warriors just suffered <laughs> their worst loss of the season, in my opinion, 124-116 to the lowly Los Angeles Lakers in LA. And before this game, I tweeted out, I said, hey, if the Warriors do lose this game, it's going to be their worst loss of the season easily by far. Halfway through the game, I was like, cool, I can delete that tweet later because they are looking like they're fighting, like they're going to win this game. But then whatever, everything just kind of fell apart and they lost. And I say it is the worst because this has to be the bottom of the barrel. We all know that they've been pretty mediocre for most of 2022. And I believe they're maybe about 15 and 15. They might be around 500 without Draymond Green. And I said when Draymond first went out, I mean, obviously we didn't know how long he'd be out for, but I was like, hey, we'll see what the Warriors are like without Draymond because we've seen what they're like without Clay. We've seen what they're like without Steph. And then we'll see how important Draymond really is. And for all you fans out there, y'all know that he's really important. But for everybody else, they sometimes think that he's overrated, doesn't really do that much. But you see right here how much he means to this team. And let's be honest, you've seen it for the better part of the last two months, maybe. And I think that when it comes to Draymond, it's like the Warriors held out for a while. You know, there were different narratives, different things happening, getting Clay acclimated and whatnot. But now they're just kind of running on fumes, right? We all know that nine game winning streak was a little bit smoke and mirrors, right? Some of those were pretty weak teams. And even some of those weak teams, they needed some luck to get past them. But for the most part, the Warriors, they just don't have toughness right now, right? I hate to say it. I mean, we all know that Draymond is the heart and soul. Everybody talks about him that way. Steve Kerr has called him that since the beginning of his tenure with the Warriors. And in this four-game streak, we've seen the Warriors just not have it, you know? Like, in this game, when the Lakers got up in the fourth quarter with 2.10 left, they were up 119-112 on a dunk from LeBron. And even though the game wasn't over... It's that instinctual feeling, right? Previously, you felt like, okay, the Warriors can get over this hump. They can get past this. But as of late, especially blowing a couple of these leads lately, I was like, no, that's too much. It's not going to happen. The Warriors scored a couple buckets, but ultimately they fizzled out. They just didn't have enough. And it's not just one thing, but I feel like the toughness and that grit and that fire to really just put the Warriors over the top to bring them across the finish line, it's it's missing. You know what I'm saying? So this just highlights even more what we've been saying on this show for a while. Like if Draymond is not there, if he's not himself, if he doesn't give you what he usually gives you, then you're toast, right? And that's just reality, right? <laughs> like... You go back to the beginning of the season, and it's always been about health. It's always been about playoff positioning, and it's about getting the new guys and younger guys acclimated to the spotlight, big games, etc., the pressure. And health has always been number one. So if Draymond isn't healthy, then it's done. You know, it's done. But as frustrating and like really aggravating as this game was, that's what gives me hope, right? And I don't mean to be like a homer, you know, that's not what I'm saying. And that the Warriors are just going to plug Dre in and it's going to be perfect. It is starting to be a little bit troubling that the Warriors without Draymond can't just close out these games. You know, these are very winnable games. The Warriors had more talent on the court than the Lakers overall. They had them on their heels. And again, there were a bunch of other things that came up in this game that through the Warriors off. I mean, first of all, it's a combination of, you know, Clay, everybody was talking about this, Clay Thompson, he didn't look good and he's not shooting well. And you could tell he was getting frustrated and he was pressing, you know, he walked off the court before the end of the half 
because he was just frustrated. But the thing about Clay, it felt like he was taking the Warriors a little bit out of their offense. Remember back in the day, Clay used to catch the ball and either do something with it or move the ball. And right now we've seen him hold the ball a little bit too long, dribble a little bit, try to kind of lull his guy and get a shot off. But it definitely didn't work in this game. And to be honest, early on, it looked like they had scouted Clay's shots because they were definitely meeting him in his spots, how he kind of drives in and then takes a fadeaway or goes to the baseline and takes a fadeaway. They were getting him on those. They were getting up in his face, getting a hand in his face on those. And good on them, I suppose. Good on the Lakers because Clay missed a bunch of early shots and it definitely affected him. And, you know, probably affected the vibe on the team a little bit. Right. And they have faith in Clay, and that certainly didn't help things moving forward. Clay Thompson, though, three for 13, one for five from three, only seven points, minus five on the night. Man, that's rough. That's rough. And, you know, people will question whether or not Steve Kerr should have put Clay in at the end of the game. I mean, Clay missed uh, a potential big three pointer at the end. And, You got to, you know, (laughs) Clay has earned that right to be in the game at this point. And it's not a question of like, okay, take him out, you know? So Steve Kerr trying to like build Clay up for the rest of the stretch run for the playoffs. He's going to put him back in as bad as Clay was. And as much as like (laughs) I was texting friends, like, oh man, Clay's coming back in. I'm a little worried. Ultimately, it probably is the right choice, you know, for Clay's headspace. So, you know, it was that Clay didn't look good. We're still getting bad Andrew Wiggins. I mean, Andrew Wiggins, six for 15, 14 points, mostly quiet 14 points. He had five boards and four assists. He did have three steals. But then on top of that, they shot 47.4% from the free throw line, nine for 19. They left 10 points on the line and that's no good i've talked about how bad of a free throw shooter andrew wiggins is how bad kavon looney is and in this game looney didn't get any free throws wiggins was 0 for 2 and it was juan toscano anderson he was three for eight and kamenga was one for three that's not going to cut it juan toscano anderson he got some playing time he wasn't too bad He actually played pretty well. He had energy. He moved the ball. You needed somebody like him to get some minutes on LeBron, even though LeBron still scored 56. But they're going to have to tighten that up. And Steph, you know, he did what he could. He was 13 for 22, four of nine from three, which is better than he's been shooting over the past month. He had four boards and just one assist. He had 30 points. The Warriors, they are now officially in third place in the Western Conference. And it sucks, but it's fine. It's fine. You know, you take a step back. The long view that I always talk about is still there in terms of like, you get the guys healthy, you get them back on the court, you get them some chemistry, and then you take your chances. You get... Draymond, you get Andre, you get Wiseman, and then that will bring you a lot that you're missing right now. But, but I titled an episode a few games ago called Non-Championship Habits, and that's starting to worry me a little bit more and more every game. When you can't look at the team and say, okay, they are going to close this down. They're not playing with the poise, the savviness that we're used to seeing from these Warriors squads. And there's obviously a chance that they are going to lose a chunk of more games coming up. The Warriors go to Denver next. They play there on Monday. But Steve Kerr, after the game, said that Klay Thompson, Steph, Wiggins, they're not traveling to Denver. They're not going to that game. That's the makeup game, the postponed game from back in, I think, end of December. That was a game that the Nuggets could have played and Draymond was available for that game, but Denver punted on that one. So they had to postpone that game. I mean, basically the Warriors got screwed because this totally gives them a really rough schedule. They get Monday in Denver, Tuesday at home against the Clippers, and then Thursday back in Denver. Are you kidding me? It sucks because literally the Warriors have lost four in a row. They could, they could potentially 
lose four more in a row, right? Because Denver, Clippers, Denver, and then on Saturday the 12th, they play at home against the Bucks. So we're going into a stretch here where, you know, I, I talked about already in a episode this past week how the Warriors could potentially fall into that fourth spot. It's going to be painful if they do. But if they go on a an eight-game losing streak, that is no good for morale, for the vibe, for the team going into the postseason. I don't know. I was frustrated as hell at this game. I guess there's a couple good things, right? A couple good things. Jordan Poole, he always seems to play well against the Lakers in LA. He always brings it. So props to him. He looked good at the end of the season in the play-in game last year. He looked good in the opening night game this season. And he looked better here. He was 9 for 15, 4 of 8 from 3. Hit some really, really big threes. He had 5 assists and he had 23 points. So that's a positive. Jonathan Kaminga, I've always said that kid is built for the bright lights and he played like it. Seven for 10, three for five from three. Only one of three from the free throw line, like I mentioned earlier, but he fought. You know, he had five boards, he had 18 points. Hoops fans, the latest offer from DraftKings Sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NBA is too good to pass up. I'm talking between the legs, 360 windmill good. New customers can bet just $1 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. It's that simple. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still take your shot at a big payday. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Basketball Contest. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code TBPN. Bet just $1 on any NBA team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code TBPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. 21 and over, minimum age and local requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for a full list of requirements and state-specific responsible gaming resources. Void where prohibited. Minimum $5 deposit. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the TN Redline 1-800-889-9789. In Connecticut, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Org slash chat. In New York, call 877-8-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y 467-369. And it's also too bad because <laughs> the Warriors could have really, really like stuck a fork in the Lakers. The Lakers were on a four game losing streak. They were only a half game ahead of the Pelicans who were in the 10th spot. So if they lost, the Pelicans and the Lakers would be tied for ninth you also don't want to see the lakers in the playoffs i've said before i'm not worried about the lakers as long as the warriors are whole but this game right here is why you don't want to see them because they do have lebron because he can do these things i don't know if he could do it for a full seven game series but he can definitely put a team on its heels so not only do you lose but you give the Lakers a little bit of life, right? Frank Vogel, the team, the organization, they've been looking for some kind of like made up signature moment to rally themselves around. And this could serve to be it. So if the Lakers make it into the regular playoffs, you get AD back, they're still bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all of a sudden Lakers are going to turn into like a, a world beating good team, but like <laughs> just as a Warriors fan, you want to see them just like done, right? You just want to see them like out. And again, you have an opportunity and you don't take it. And that has been the thing that we've seen during this four game losing streak even stretching back into the games before the All-Star break, right? Where is that killer instinct? You could have stuck a fork in the Dallas Mavericks. It didn't happen. You could have stuck a fork in these Los Angeles Lakers, and it didn't happen. It's not all doom and gloom, obviously, but with a losing streak comes that negative momentum, and that's what you want to dig yourself out of. So <laughs> I don't think well go on an eight game losing streak overall, but they could, they could. So prepare yourselves for an interesting ride. The season is not over. This isn't the end, but something somehow has to change. 
we'll see. There is space for optimism and it's not just all like falling apart or whatever. I did like the lineups out there with pool Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. Who would have thunk that those three dudes would be on the court playing major minutes all at the same time. I can appreciate that a lot. I forgot to mention Moses Moody. Actually, I, that dude was four for four. He hit his one three pointer and he had nine points. That's solid. That's solid. And so you like to see that. So <laughs> we'll see how the backups do. We'll see how the young guys do in Denver. There's obviously still time to write the ship and everything, but some of these trends are problematic, right? Like, yeah, Draymond is the heart and soul, but you should be able to put these games away. You should. So there is a little bit of an issue. You'd like to see it fixed to some extent before Draymond gets back, but we'll see. We'll see what happens and we'll go from there. You know, I still believe in the totality of this team. I still believe in a healthy version of this team. And obviously no team is going to be 100% healthy, but you get these guys together, then it'll be all right. It'll be all right. But for now, it sucks. <laughs> anyway, that is another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Patrick Epino, E-P-I-N-O, or at Oakland Warriors. Check us out at OaklandWarriors.com, and be sure to check out our new YouTube channel, Oakland Warriors. The link will be in the show description. And be sure to tell your fellow Warrior fan friends to tune in and listen. The Open Warriors podcast is produced by National Film Society and is a part of the Basketball Podcast Network. And if you're so inclined, please do give us a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and leave us a nice review on Apple Podcasts. That would be hugely helpful and very much appreciated. Thanks for listening. That's it. Music in this episode provided by Paper Sun. Special thanks to Paul Amardo for production support. See you next time, and go Dubs. Yeah.